I compose a poem off the top of the dome in collaboration with the skies, in collaboration with her cries. Today, I don't shed tears. I let her thunderous rains ease the pain so that I can go on lighter, so that I can actually try to concentrate on something and create because it's the only tool I have been given in this lifetime to decolonize, to undo generations and generations and generations of genocide. Saludos and welcome to the Rime Trading Boriquin podcast where we discuss the journey to the essence of these islands, this archipelago and her surrounding waters, the restoration of our essence before conquests and continued colonialism, the reclamation of our collective healing and liberation. I am Yasmin Hernandez, creator of Cucubanación, artist, writer, activist, born and raised in Brooklyn, Rime Trading Boriquin. Our recordings, our voices, our stories, our proclamations, our professions and confessions are meant to be dramatic. Like her winds, like her rainfalls, like her thunder, like her lightning cracks. Meant to be dramatic, like her flooding, raging, swelling rivers, reclaiming flood zones and floodplains across landscapes that man decided to allocate to some of the use. She reclaims them like the Felix Matas reclaimed lands appropriated by the U.S. Navy across Monte Carmelo y Bravos de Boston. Bulldozing, trees grown on lands demarcated as military property to build homes for new loves, new couples, new Boricua families. Our thoughts remembered are meant to surface, be spoken and shared and recorded by others and lived and learned from, never suppressed, tucked away into bones and wounded flesh, only to be alchemized into Alzheimer's later in life. Our emotions are to be felt, our feelings spread across our bodies alive with the understanding that is living whether it be pain whether it be joy whether it be pleasure always alive always feeling always present always aware ever conscious in this moment that we are here Caring always in every drop of ancient rains, ancient ancestral memories that we remember as they fall on our crowns, as they trickle down our skin, as they cool our auras. Seeping into flesh, muscle, bone, we embody the rememberings. We remember lost parts of ourselves that we get back each time we step across her soils of moist mud soaked from the last storm. Creating art in this mess is exhausting work. It's grueling work. Tears your heart to shreds, and most days it is hard to stand. Most days it is hard to move. Most days making it back to bed and sleeping through the night. Dark, fanless nights without electricity or running water. If we can do that and squeeze a dream from that, we've done so much. We've done so much. I compose a poem off the top of the dome in collaboration with the skies, 
in collaboration with her Christ. Today, I don't shed tears. I let her thunderous rains ease the pain so that I can go on lighter, so that I can actually try to concentrate on something and create because it's the only tool I've been given in this lifetime to decolonize, to undo generations and generations and generations of genocide. By being here, my born day in a few days and celebrating that I am alive. And though I started this day thinking that there was nothing to fucking celebrate for these times that we must navigate, I realize the greatest weapon to decolonize is to every day be my most maximum expression of life. My birth month in New York always was the arrival of the cicadas. I used to signal my birthday and it was summer and it was beautiful and it was festive and it was chill and it was relaxing before school started. For all the people that visit Puerto Rico in August and try to connect with me and see me in Nunca Se Da, August is a whole other thing for me here. August is when I go into my cave. Yes, it is my birth month, but it's a whole other thing. It's a whole other back on this side. It is when my children start school, and that is my number one um, priority is getting my kids ready for school and also getting myself ready to start that new year. Ahora tenemos perro y caballo. In the children returning to school in August, it means that we are re-picking up, we're reactivating our workload because now we have childcare again. <laughs> It is what it is. Ahí nos reactivamos, pero a la misma vez que nos reactivamos because Puerto Rico is following an academic schedule, so any programming and things like that will activate in late August, mid-August. August is the start of the most active part of our hurricane season. Our most active weeks of the hurricane season are September. Doesn't mean there's going to be hurricanes all the time, but there's systems passing us all the time and we are vigilant all the time. August and September are the hottest, humidest ass months in Puerto Rico. They are the most uncomfortable. They are the most hot. And what comes with that? The most apagones. Okay, Luma no necesita cosa para jodio tener apagones, but when it is so hot and humid and everyone is running all of their devices and ACs y todo, the power is going out constantly. So the months of August and September, I always say, if I were president of Puerto Rico, of a free Puerto Rico, school wouldn't start till like October. We always miss classes because of storm systems. It happened with Ernesto. They canceled classes so people could plan. They canceled classes so people could be safe. I had no idea that Ernesto would be the threat that it would be. I remember joking to my husband the day after or the day of cuando se puso bien, bien fuertecito. And I was like, yo, how come you didn't give me a fucking memo? That we were going to have a hurricane today because that's what that shit felt like. And I think it did. I don't know if it also made it up to a one here or what, but Ernesto was blowing, okay? Y tumbó caña por todo esto. Why do so many people come here in those months? Because it's the end of the, of the vacations in the north. Because the airlines know the hurricane season has started. So they're going to sell you the cheapest ass tickets in August and September. 
But for those of us here, we are not on vacation. We are coming out of vacation. We are trying to stock on gasoline for our blandas, stock on drinking water. We are stocking on boderia and pantry items. We have to get back to work at precisely the time that we have to gear up and prepare for a catastrophe, just in case. Maria was a motherfucking catastrophe. And every time this year, we're reminded that we have to prepare again. If people here are not the most festive, the most chill, the most socially minded, when you come to visit, if people are trying to save on their gas and not travel across the island or the archipelago to come see you when you come visit, please don't take that shit personally. It is a necessity. I've been meaning to share this message for years and I haven't, and I'm glad to do it here. If your peoples in the Caribbean are not available to you in these months, do not take it personally. The month of August, the month of September, in Puerto Rico, colony with fucked up services. Don't take it personally. So now there's the stillness. Calculating when to turn on the planta, we need it right now to work. But when the kids come back from school, we shouldn't leave them in the dark, like in the heat, right? So we agree to turn it on later. And Ivan's going to do his Zoom call, Zoom meeting on the phone. I'm going to sketch out part of this project I'm working on and plan out stuff in my notebooks before I connect to my computers. I don't have the energy to make it down to the art space in my Yaguas as I had intended. I will do that tomorrow. So without the habanico puesto, stillness to feel the breeze coming in through the window. Don't expend too much energy. Don't be overactive. Don't overheat your body. Last night sleeping, hours beyond the storm leaving out to sea. Todavía habían ráfaga, viento y banda de lluvia. And in my sleep, I'm like wrestling. Like, what is this? Why? And then had this, oh, these, estas ráfaga, estas son limpieza, esto, estos son viento que vienen a acomodar y limpiar todo lo que está pasando con usted y en el mundo. Y, and this is my subconscious mind trying to reason, like at 2.30. And then at 3, our youngest son comes into the room and it's pitch black and I don't see him, but I hear his voice and I knew what it was. You know, he wakes up in the middle of the night and can't see anything. And it's because there's always light from somewhere. So even if you're sleeping in the dark, there's light filtering from the street lamps outside. Pero cuando no hay luz, no hay luz. Y todo está completamente oscuro. And so I was like, I know, I know what it is. You know, I had taken some battery operated Christmas lights and put them on top of a shelf he had there. But they're battery operated and they're on a six hour timer. So se prendieron a las nueve y ya las tres se apagaron. Wakes up, he's in pitch blackness, comes in strong. So it's three in the morning, I'm feeling around in the darkness, trying to switch this thing back on. Our oldest son couldn't get to bed because the planta was on. It was too much noise. So these are children that now have to wake up and go to school and be alert the whole day. But their night was all disrupted. But why do we send them to school? Because in school, they got the big dookie plantas and they'll have AC. There's now a heat advisory for today at school. They have children to hang out with and complain to and play with, hopefully. And they have AC and they'll be fed. And they have water. And that's why 
after three months being home with them, we send them so we can work and so that they will be entertained instead of being home with no light. And these are the things that we calibrate to in the month of August. These are the things we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out how to make it through the school calendar and work calendar. My husband has to strategically not tell his clients that there's a storm coming so that they don't say, hey, don't give that project to this dude because he lives in this unstable place <laughs> that doesn't have reliable electric electric service. They have a deadline for Friday. So he's had to anticipate this and had to work late into the night and through the weekend to ensure that he could be ahead of the game so that when the storm, when knock out this Luma bullshit, that he would be a couple of steps ahead. These are the things that we calibrate to. These are the things that we must consider getting enough gas, having enough cash. You go to a store que no tiene sistema, tú no puedes comprar nada con tu ATH. Or no card. And it takes a lot of energy in the mind to do these things. And people who may not understand that may take these things lightly. So that people may vacation here and dodge the storm by a few days y en que ellos todavía están posteando fotos de ellos con una medalla en una playa. Nosotros estamos aquí. Y hay algunas personas limpiando el fango de su piso. Sacando fornitura a secarse en el sol. Important that we all calibrate as a, an expansive, spread out nation. Because those who are not living here need to understand something of the rhythms here so that the way you move about in this place when you arrive to visit is not extractive. And you're not coming here and hitting it up for all the fun you could possibly have and you're visiting and or saying to people, mira, llévame a tal sitio porque esa gasolina que gastaron llevándote de una esquina a la isla grande a la otra, a la otra Quizá esa fue la última gasolina y si llega una tormenta no va a haber. Especially en las islas municipios donde llega la gasolina como una vez a la semana. Caen un montón de turistas y se, se chupan toda la gasolina y dejan los residentes sin gasolina. I know in New York we start school in September. Not over here. If you're still on vacation and you want to see people make an effort to go see them because you're the one who's fluid on vacation. Other people are bound to school and work. We are calibrating to the intricacies of how to do enough compra but not load our fridge too much so when the power goes on, no estamos botando compra, cosas que se dañaron. This morning I was yelling, my husband, no, close it, close it, because he's moving all the stuff from the fridge up into the freezer, but he has both doors open. I'm like, no, you're letting all the cold air out. Don't do that. And all he's doing is trying to preserve our perishables and there's no other way to go about it. But I'm like hysterical watching the little cold air escape from the fridge because there's certain appliances and certain plantas that if you don't have a big humongous stupi planta, you can't connect shit like a fridge. And then basic shit that people are like addicted to, like their hair dryer, que yo llevo 10 años que no uso un blower or a blender to make like a fucking breakfast smoothie esas cosas te tumban la planta a lot of hot water heaters can't do it so there's something about August that is so unique in the psyche of a caribeñe who has to rework their rhythm to the winds and whatever they may bring whenever 
they decide. Time is no longer ours. Time is no longer decided by clocks. Time is determined by the sun, when it rises, when it falls, and the arrival of winds. Oh, it may not be as easy to adhere to your vacation schedules. Puerto Rico's population is majority older. There are a lot of us, in addition to recalibrating to all of these needs and all of our personal and professional needs, and also caretaking babies and children and teens are also caretaking elders of our family. A lot of people with animals that are left out in these winds. Five minutes away in El Valle de Coloso, there's a bunch of cows sitting in water and mud. I started this new series for rematriating Boriquen that I call Trinchera de Ideas because, you know, those of you familiar with my work in this project and rematriation, and I um, work a lot with the abyss as metaphor, with the Puerto Rico trench y la trinchera de Puerto Rico as this metaphor. And it's a metaphor that also comes from the darkness that we live, the darkness of colonialism imposed, darkness of colonialism of climate change and of bullshit services like the one that Luma brings or doesn't bring. So long before I moved here, I learned that by luminescence of Boriquen, of Bieke, could be a medicine. It could be a container of so many lessons and ancestral, so much ancestral wisdom that could aid us and guide us. And that has been in my personal path. Pero trinchera de ideas and trinchera by luminescence, there is a whole uh, infinity of forms of bioluminescence in the abyss and the trench because the trench of Puerto, the Puerto Rico trench plummets 28,000 feet where there's no light of the sun. And so through any number of that death, I think that the death, don't quote me on this, but I think somewhere around 2,000 feet is where the sunlight no longer penetrates. What they call the twilight zone, <laughs> if I'm correct, right? If you're interested, look it up. And so at 28,000 feet, there is no light whatsoever of the sun, but then you have all these creatures that produce their own. And that's the metaphor for me. Que si estamos tanto en la oscuridad, pues tenemos que buscar nuestra forma de nosotros mismos iluminar. And how do we harness this light from within? And how do we help each other shine, right? Instead of the typical colonial shit, and what we're conditioned to do, which is to put out each other's light and to become dull and dark in our ways and how we move and think. And everything is about powerlessness. Everything becomes about giving up our power and spending all of our days resisting against an authority or power over us, right? But if we look at the way that our freedom fighters worked, their whole thing was to not recognize the, the jurisdiction of any authority or colonial authority, especially over us. And so my interest is in having conversations about how we harness our own power, because we can't spend 24 seven resisting someone else's power. Doing that fuels their power. <laughs> and so many of us know so much about the enemy or so much about the colonizer, but we know very little about ourselves. And knowing about ourselves is not just knowing your history as a people, as a community. It's about being intimately connected to your own self, your own fears, your own aspirations and imagination and dreams and ideas. So Trinchera de Ideas comes from a quote by Jose Martí. Que mejor tener una trinchera de ideas que una trinchera de piedra. And that's why I'm giving it that title. But the idea behind it is that as I was doing these 
uh, interviews of folks on the rematriation journey in preparation for the portrait series, which I call Portraits from the Trench. Um, a lot of my questions that I was throwing out at people, and not just questions, but they were like word analogies, right? Like, tierra siembra, islas, diaspora, eh, archipiélago, agua, things like that. And what the word prompts did, I like the prompts, the word prompts or like analogies better because the question is pointed. It kind of leads you somewhere and the prompts are more like first thing that comes to mind, right? Top of the dome. What, what comes from you when you hear this? And what I was finding was so much beautiful wisdom coming from people about lessons that were triggered in them each time that they were connecting to a different element of our arch archipelago. And the thing is that we don't think of Puerto Rico in those terms, or even the way that I myself came up into Puerto Rican history, into the politics and the history and the, you know, liberation struggle. A lot of it was based on people and movements and organizations and groups and parties. Pero cuánto de eso se informa y se, se dirige por la misma tierra. And that was the, the greatest lesson that I learned in coming here is that what, what most sustained me here was the land. The years that I was living in Moca and could step out into our back terraza and just stare out at this valley and uh, just taking in the breezes that are still coming. Um, stare out into this valley hasta el punto que muchas veces cuando pasaban los guaraguao volando, they were at like my eye level. Like that just shifts your whole perspective on things. When you're looking out at a horizon, then mismo nivel que un guaraguao in flight, it's hard to think small. <laughs> it's hard. You know, you, you got to elevate everything. You got to like rise to that. And, and so... So much of the stuff I was writing, thinking, doing, being inspired to see, to do, to paint, to write, to think, lo que sea, was coming from that vibration mismo de la tierra misma. Eh, and I'm like, we got to start cataloging this stuff, right? So last year we had done these rematriation gatherings and it was just for people to get, to get to know each other. And it was more diaspora based, like the people that want to be able to speak English and that be okay with that here. And the people who want to speak a broken Spanish and not be judged or the people who want to speak Spanglish and not be judged. That's what it was about last year. And it's still about that. But this time it's also including people that have always been here because you can't have these conversations without the original stewards of the land, the people that have lived their lives calibrated to the land in this way. So people most calibrated in that way and to this commitment and discussing a reconnection to the essence of these islands and wanting to support other people in their journey to that. These are not people that come in judgment and criticism. These are people that come open. These are people that are have long been working at the vibration and the energy of the heart. And so it's really about uniting on that vibe, how we pulse with heart energy. Because para mí eso es lo que significa esta tierra. So the idea is each session we focus on a different theme, much like we did with the interviews, the different questions or word prompts. Each session, we focus on a different element around the archipelago. This next one, the one that was supposed to happen today was supposed to be archipelago, archipelago. What is the medicine of the archipelago? When we reflect on that, like what does it mean to be hearing this live news report about a tropical storm affecting Vieques at that very moment and already feeling the winds and the rains at the furthest opposite end of the same archipelago. All right, la, la forma que nos dividen, pero estamos teniendo la misma experiencia al mismo momento. 
y lo hablan como que si bien que estuviera por allá lejos teniendo tal experiencia y nosotros no. Cuando nosotros aquí en esta tierra sabemos que en estas dos esquinas extremas de este archipiélago estamos viviendo lo mismo. So that's the first. And then in September we continue con viento and hurricanes because it's September 19, the day before the anniversary of Huracan María. And the purpose of that is to gather people to exchange medicine. Every time we talk about, I ask the question, what's your greatest challenge here? And people always Most of them will say Maria in some form or another, but then people will also immediately speak to what they learned from Maria, the lessons of Maria. So it's recon recontextualizing that those memories of Maria so that they're not just the ones that come through PTSD, trauma, sino what are the things, what are the, what are the memories that Maria unleashed in us? What are the saberes, the ancestral wisdom that Maria stirred up and loosened in us and brought back to the surface to be, become part of our, our conscious memory again? And beyond conscious memory, there's a collective memory. And then how can we access that all together and put it into practice? And that's the concept behind these sessions. Thank you so much for listening. This is Yasmin Hernandez with another episode of the Rematriating Body Game podcast. Our next Trinchera de Ideas, as I was discussing at the end of this episode, uh, will be on the topic of agua dulce or sweet water, fresh water, como los rio, with our guest Talia Barrilla and from Aniasco. And That will be on Thursday, October 17th from 5 to 7. The trincheras so are normally every third Thursday of the month. I will also be offering summaries on future podcast episodes of the different topics that we are discussing, like archipelago, so that folks can understand a little of what is being discussed when we gather. If you are not able to be present here, in Mayagüez to meet with us. Usually I post new episodes of this podcast on the new and full moons. Tuve que darme par de breaks en los meses de agosto y septiembre, which is why these two months deserve their own podcast episodes to discuss all that we are holding in these months, all that we may not be able to commit to <laughs> in these months. So, Uh, definitely look out on those moon dates. And also in between, there might be some surprise episodes popping up. So either way, you will always find information about the project, Rematriating Body Gang, Rematriating with an M, Body Gang, B-O-R-I-K-E-N.com. And on the Rematriating Body Gang social media pages on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. You can support and stay more in tune by subscribing to this channel, getting notifications about future posts, and by following here and also on the rematriatingborican.com website, you can access the podcast and you can also read the blog there, which you can follow as well or follow us on social media. Thank you so much for supporting. Thank you so much for listening in.